Donald Trump. Uh, uh, that was a powerful performance uh, over the course of uh, better than 45 minutes. Uh, the, the folks came in Mobile, Alabama, looking for a show, wanting to hear a, a voice of reason, and as he suggested in his closing, uh, a voice that they think uh, can deliver on the promise he's making. Uh, Jedediah Bela, uh, your reaction to the Trumpian moment. Yeah, I thought he did a great job. I thought he, he did what he does best. He connected with people. He was funny. He was entertaining. But at the same time, he prioritized American interests. He prioritized American jobs. I think that Americans feel that this is a guy, a businessman, not a politician, who's genuinely looking out for them. One line that stuck out for me that he said, mm -hmm. he said, I hate gutless people. And I think that <laughs> most people, I think that's a great line, though, because yeah. most people think of politicians, left, right, center, as gutless. This is a guy who has who has guts. He, he says things that offend people sometimes. He says Look at things the House that of Representatives right now. Look at the approval numbers uh, in Congress that's, across the board. That, Disgraceful. That's the big thing that you hear from Trump supporters is we elected a Republican Congress. They told us things were going to change and they haven't. That is frequently, frequently cited by Trump supporters. And it's a frustration to your point that all of these candidates are talking about creating jobs, having a stronger military, um, you know, fixing immigration. But it's the messenger yes. is that it, it, it makes it so different. And this, talking earlier with Ed Rollins, Ed, I mean, this is an analog to the Ross Perot oh, yeah. candidacy. Uh, I, I, I find it impossible to believe that pundits were saying just a couple of months ago that this is a, a fiction, it, it is ethereal. Uh, I, I've, it will... I've always been amazed by pundits, including myself, who's been a pundit for about 50 years. <laughs> People say, well, that person can't be elected. And I say, well, go walk by the Senate some days. About 80 people voting every day who couldn't get elected. And there's about uh, 400 people in the House of Representatives who couldn't get elected. This guy could be elected. He is tapping into something in America that I haven't seen in 30, 40 years. Uh, he's a very powerful messenger. And here's his message. You don't like what's going on, take a chance on me. Take a chance on me. And I think a lot of, there's not a person here tonight that's not going to walk out and be enthused. They're not going to go away. They don't care about, I mean, I can argue, can he get this stuff right. done with the Congress and what have you? It doesn't matter. He's, he's a great salesman. He's selling America. He's selling himself, well, and that's a very powerful We just did a little checking here because uh, Donald Trump referred uh, as he would. He's a marketer. Uh, he is a salesman. He is a showman, obviously. But he started talking about the art of the deal. He signed uh, the woman's uh, copy uh, of the art of the deal book. That book came out, uh, let's see, what was it, 28 years ago, 1987. It is running right now. This is just a little pollster. He doesn't need pollsters. He's got Amazon <laughs> in his book. His book is down the top 200 on Amazon, for crying out loud. And this is a man starting to, to move the public consciousness. And people bring his books to his events all the time. I mean, in New Hampshire, people were lining up to, get to, to, hand, to hand them to him. You know, I mean, they, they've earlier, been engaged. You referred earlier, Caitlin, to, uh, to the intensity here. We are watching intensity in a stage of a primary presidential campaign where I don't remember intensity like this. It's palpable. It's More measurable. More than a year from an election yeah. as well. <laughs> Several months from a caucus. Yeah. Also, who can do that on the right? Tell me who, which of the candidates, we've seen them in the debate now, who can go out there and deliver a speech like that? He had no notes. Be charismatic. Be funny. Let me tell you, from what I'm seeing, none of them can. And you know who else can't do that? Hillary Clinton can't do that. She's terrible at this, and she knows it. So I think the public is craving someone who seems excited mm. about the job and who is an outsider who doesn't come from the Washington circle who they feel they can count on to have some practical um, proposals. The intellectuals of America will not be for him. Uh, I always oh my goodness, we, I, I hope we, I, 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 we no, can't have that. And they're going to challenge him and I'm always remind my friends in New York and California where I grew up, there's about 210 million people live between the two coasts. Yes. Uh, he's going to be very popular among those folks. He's going to be very popular in elements of New York and California. Right. And my sense is he's got a momentum that's going to be hard to stop at this point in time. He may be stopped, he may stumble, but you're not going to basically beat him on this facts or what have you at this point in time. Let's go to John Roberts uh, there in uh, in Lad Peebles uh, Stadium. Uh, quite a show, John. Yeah, quite a show, Lou. Remind me next time to bring my earphones so I can hear you. I'll tell you, here's, here's the thing that Trump has got going for him.
He doesn't sugarcoat it. He doesn't say, oh, things are wonderful in the United States. He says things are bad, but I'm going to make it better. And whether it's the fact that he's been very successful in his own personal life or the reality show context, but people here, when they hear that, they actually believe it. We, I had women who were in their late 50s jumping up and down like they were seeing you know, a, a teen rock band here tonight. He, he just has a way, Lou, of connecting with people that, where they believe him. And he certainly didn't uh, didn't pull any punches against some of his opponents. He was really hammering Jeb Bush again tonight, saying that he's low energy, people fall asleep during his town hall. Can you imagine what would happen if he were president of this country negotiating deals? Trump's big strength here tonight was he has negotiated a lot of deals. And whether or not he could negotiate one with China or Japan or, or, or Russia or whomever, it remains to be seen because he hasn't negotiated any of those type of political deals. But he has people believing that he could do it, he could do it well. And that's important political capital that money can't even buy. And, and give us a sense, John, because I, the, the shots that were taken tonight showed uh, uh, the crowds uh, and the seats that were filled. Give us a sense of how many people were actually in uh, the stadium tonight there with him. Well, if you take a look at that bleacher that's behind him, I did a rough count of sort of how many people sit in each row and how many rows there are. There were probably about 1,800 to 2,000 people who were behind him. And then you had similar crowds on, on the wings here, and you probably had another 1,000 people in the middle. So I would say a, a, probably a pretty liberal estimate of how many people were here tonight would have been between eight and 10,000. Now, the Trump campaign had told us coming into this they had requests for more than 35,000 people for tickets. Although it was nowhere near that, but don't forget, they didn't say they were going to have 35,000 people. They said that's how many people said they wanted to come. And I understand the weather has been uh, dicey to say the to say the least. Uh, Trump referred to it there, and, and no one seemed a bit worried about getting rained on or, or hit by uh, lightning. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, the guy has got horseshoes when it comes to the weather because thunderstorms were swirling all around all day today, and the one place that didn't get wet was Lad Peebles Stadium. And it was interesting, Trump made a joke tonight. He's, he's into the hair jokes tonight, Lou. He said, if it rains, who cares? I'll take off my hat and then I'll right. prove once and for all, yes, it is mine. So yeah, and then as he was doing it, he took off his hat. Uh, we see Trump in a car. We were expecting uh, him to be talking with you and other reporters afterwards. At least that was the, the plan. Uh, he will be. He's, he's just going to another part of the uh, the. Uh, but the interesting, about, the interesting thing about getting in the car, he gets yeah, the front seat of the car. My understanding is, unless things have changed, Unless things have changed, my understanding is that he's still going to hold a press availability afterwards. They just want to let right. the stadium clear out a little bit. We're right. also tied to these positions here, Lou, so we got to get inside the stadium and able to, in right. order to be able to do that. All right. Well, we'll give you time to, to get over there, too, John, as always. Thank you very much. John Roberts uh, reporting Thanks, for Thanks, Lou. Us. Good to be with you. Reporting uh, live in Mobile, Alabama tonight, John. Good work, as always. Ed, you were saying... Uh, the wonderful thing was he didn't climb in the back seat, climbed in the front seat, shook hands with the cop as he's going out. That's the everyman touch uh, yeah. SUV, not a big limousine, Cadillac, what have you. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a, for a billionaire, there's a common touch to him, and the one, th whatever the size of the crowd, his language for is, crying out loud is, 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 is he didn't, unpretentious. He did not lose a soul in that audience. And my sense of the 10,000, 20, whatever the number is, there'll be 10,000 more tomorrow wanting to come see him again. I was watching you all too. He didn't lose anyone in the studio either. <laughs> no. they, the interesting thing, John mentioned uh, how Trump is relentless in going after Jeb Bush and, right. and kind of the conventional wisdom in the beginning, and I had said this in the beginning, that, that this would have been to Bush's advantage, that it would, you know, Trump would have made Bush appear more presidential. The, the reality is that, you know, to your point, that we don't want, um, that Trump supporters don't want presidential. They want someone that is doing what Trump is doing, an analogy Can that... Yeah, we've got we've got sound uh, of uh, Trump going after uh, Governor Bush. Uh, here he is. And when Jeb Bush, uh, when Jeb Bush, who's totally in favor of Common Core, weak on immigration, right? Very weak on immigration, wants to let people come in. Although now he is using Anchor Baby. You know, he put out a memo, you cannot use Anchor Baby. Now because I used it, he's using it. That's what you're talking about. Uh, he, he really has targeted Bush. Yeah. He's using Bush for speed bag. Bush ought to just take a piece of tape and put Everlast right across his forehead because he's punching him around like he's a speed bag. Yeah. And that's, that's, 
Is that, that because he perceives Trump to be the principal, his well, principal I think, uh, competition? I, I, I think Bush started as the establishment candidate. Everyone assumed he was the front runner. Everybody assumed it was going to be Hillary uh, Bush yeah. race. It's certainly not that today. And I think to a certain extent, everything that, that Trump is about is what yeah. Bush is not. Uh, here's another example of Donald Trump and what he's about. Uh, here we go. And you know, we're leading in every poll. We're leading in just about every state, including Alabama. Big. We're leading in Florida. Can you believe it? And we're leading big in Florida. And you know, it's really amazing. I said, well, Florida, I love Florida. It's a great place, right? Great. But Florida, we have a governor and we have a sitting senator. And I'm killing him. Explain that. Uh, the man is laying it straight out. In Alabama, by the way, he leads Governor Bush two to one, uh, 30 percent to 15. I, I want to go to another part of this, and, and this is important about what, uh, uh, what Trump did there uh, in, in that speech. Uh, he's, he talks again about Ford, which he's talked about before. He's even referred to the fact that he had talked about Ford before. What he's describing is precisely what's going on, uh, building a, a plant uh, in, in Mexico. He also talked about the insurance companies as the principal beneficiaries of Obamacare. And, you know, I imagine there would be some wags in the national liberal media who go after him for that. But here is the reality, because I was just curious about their performance uh, over the past 12 months. Uh, on a day in which we watched three quarters of a trillion dollars in market cap uh, vanish uh, on Wall Street, uh, United Health uh, Group uh, dropped about 3% and uh, Aetna 2.5%. But how have they done over the year? They're leading the market. They're up 46%. Aetna is up 38%, uh, uh, excuse me, over the course of the past year. Uh, United Health Group uh, up 38%, uh, 38 and 46%, respectively. I, I mean, that is extraordinary, Jedediah, that he can just, he touches on it and opens up the reality in front of us. I think he touched on a little bit of everything. He touched on immigration. He, he touched on all of these hot button issues, Obamacare. Of course he went after Jeb Bush. Why not? What is Jeb Bush going to do about it? Jeb Bush has proven to not be so great mm -hmm. with comebacks. And I think he feels confident that he can go after him. And let's face it, Jeb Bush doesn't do Donald Trump style attacks well. So I think it's going to be a struggle for him to have a comeback. I think most importantly, though, this whole art of the deal, this idea of him being a good negotiator was really key. That's the common theme throughout, that you have to trust the guy who's going to be talking with Iran, who's going to be talking with insurance companies, who's going to be, do, who's going to be hiring people, regular people, not politicians. Good Lord, to be why wasn't that part of the calculus? Him. Why wasn't that part of the algorithm, uh, Ed? In, in 2008, don't, in, don't in ask, 2012. Don't ask me. We have just watched, and, and, and once again, I spent 30 years in government, 50 years around politics, we've just watched the worst deal ever negotiated for this country yep. by the Secretary of State and the President. Every single person in this country, other than the Democrats in Congress, realizes. So this guy is saying there'll never be a deal like that. We'll never get taken advantage. I don't care who it is. I'm going to stick it to them. I'm going to negotiate out and negotiate them. So it's just a reinforcement of what's going wrong with the country and that he is not someone who's going to be taken advantage of. And who thought we would be looking at a billionaire? Uh, Republican candidate for president uh, in 2015, uh, who is without question, uh, he is a populist uh, on these uh, on these issues, uh, and, and he's attacked not only Governor Jeb Bush. I mean, he went after the the he told the story of Caroline Kennedy and how she got her ambassadorship, uh, and, and to what degree uh, the, the the Obama administration examined her qualifications. I mean, he is he is brutal in, in and this. relentless. Yeah, and there's also one. <laughs> and it's great to watch. One other thing we missed that it was very very telling to those who are deep believers. And in the South, the evangelical is very powerful. In Iowa, he talked about the Bible mm -hmm. very subtly. He talked about the yes. Bible. He's doing that in almost every but stop. That's now. A, that's that's a code word. I mean, to the, to these people, and it's very very significant. And whatever else he is or isn't. The fact that the Bible is important to him, to those people, that's, that's a very telling thing. And it, and it shows some, a little bit of correction on the campaign part. I mean, a right. few, uh, I think it was a month or so ago in Iowa, um, he was asked whether he asked 
asks for forgiveness, and he said, you know, not really. And that yeah. really was... You're getting wrong. I would ask for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And that was thought to be one of those moments that, oh, well, that's where it starts yeah, but that's, to come yeah. apart. Isn't that really crazy of the national media? They think they've got Donald Trump because of a comment like that. He is, he's also exposing, uh, he's exposing, uh, you know, the health care companies and Obamacare, Ford and out, uh, you know, outsourcing uh, jobs uh, and, and, and doing business in Mexico instead of the United States, not creating jobs here, but there. You know, he is exposing the, he says, how stupid are we? Yeah. And suddenly you include in that the national media. Right. And yeah. by the way, we get uh, we earn our place uh the fact of the matter is the national media ha has played gotcha for so long they think that they've got some sort yes. of superpower and can influence everything the new york times today ran an editorial in which they basically said we give up we can't use political correctness against donald trump we cannot do hit pieces to any effect uh that was a remarkable admission on the part of a, a, a pillar of the national liberal media, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think the reality here is this, this is a campaign, and I was a doubter. I mean, I, you know I've been on the show, <laughs> right. I was a doubter. Uh, what I've seen in two months uh, is, is a, mon a momentum that is building, and I saw it once before with Perot, but I said, as you said, Perot rolled over and played dead. This guy will never play dead. He's going to fight right to the bitter end, and he's tough. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Perot because that scares the hell out of the establishment uh, GOP, and I'm sure concerns uh, some Republicans, uh, you know, listening mm -hmm. to us, watching us here tonight, that Trump will not buy into the I'm going to support any candidate that the Republican Party puts forward. Uh, that's disturbing. Uh, what do you think, Caitlin? I don't think it matters anymore. I think it mattered that first debate because people were worried about him not being a viable candidate. If I'm sitting as the only way he's going to be president is to be the elected Republican. He's not going to be president by being a third party candidate. But I think the reality is he's better than a 50 50 shot today to be the president, be the nominee of the president. Of you the think Republican. it's better than 50 50 right now? Absolutely. It's, I, I, everybody has to step up their game here. And I don't think they know how to do that. I've watched these. Well, other they guys. have to this point. I see. I've just seen them diminish themselves, and they're all running old. They run the kinds of campaigns I understand, which are old school, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure they understand the new game. And the new game is this: the cable TV, the, the social media. This guy has dominated like nobody has for the last two months. Every social media. I, I get on Facebook, and for the first. 20 minutes, all I see is Donald Trump stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that, I'm sure, all day long. Every time you turn on the TV, any station, it's Donald Trump. Well, it's, it's Donald Trump here tonight, for sure. <laughs> and the other candidates, uh, they had nothing, nothing in their game for what Donald Trump served right. up tonight. Right. And I do think that the attacks on Jeb Bush in particular are going to start to penetrate in some way. And that's why we saw one of the big stories this week was, was Jeb Bush fighting back at Trump. He has been very reluctant to do so, and he's been trying to, you know, get back at him. And it, it, it's, it's not really working. And I think this week we've just seen a shift in how these campaigns might mm -hmm. start to operate. And I think that's a really, really big story. Well, we've got, uh, I, I want to say thank you, Jedediah, for being with us, Ed. Thank, thank you, you very much, Caitlin. Thank, thank you. Uh, we have just learned, I've just received uh, word via uh, my uh, IFB and your piece uh, that uh, Donald Trump has hit, looked uh, when he got in that car. He was leaving. Uh, he canceled the press availability, we're told, and is, uh, is moving on to the next venue. Uh, so uh, mission accomplished for the uh, Trump side of this, and uh, I think... Uh, Increasingly, this is a message that is uh, starting to uh, starting to resonate with uh, some serious uh, impact on the Republican nomination process. Uh, again, uh, he went after Macy's. He went after Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. He went after Jeb Bush. He went after the insurance companies. Not bad work for one night. The uh, the remarkable candidacy. It's something. Uh, as Ed uh, Ed Rollins said at the outset, Trump has turned. Uh, turned into a phenomenon, uh, and one that uh, now I think is really rolling. Uh, I agree. We're, we're, going to, we're going to have a lot of fun watching a man who says he's going to bring a lot of fun back uh, to the country and do so in great spirit and straight away. Thanks for being with us. We return you to Strange Inheritance already in progress.